Sorry about that. I haven't done that in a while. Good afternoon, and welcome to the weekly Friday Forum of the City Club of Cleveland. I'm Tony Peebles, Vice President of the City Club Forum Foundation and a past president of the City Club Board of Directors. I'm honored today to stand in for Ralph De La Rada, our current City Club President. Today, we are pleased to add to the list of distinguished forum speakers, Dr. Janetta B. Cole, Chair of the Board of the Janetta B. Cole Global Diversity and Inclusion Institute, founded and resides at the Bennett College in North Carolina. Dr. Cole has had a long and distinguished career as an educator and a humanitarian. She made history in 1987 by becoming the first African-American woman to serve as the president of Spelman College. At her inauguration as the seventh president of Spelman, Bill and Camille Cosby made a gift of $20 million to the college, the largest single gift from individuals to a historically black college or university. Dr. Cole then served as president of Bennett College, the other historically black college for women, from 2002 to 2007. During her tenure, she raised an unprecedented $50 million for the college. Dr. Cole was born in Jacksonville, Florida, and at the age of 15 entered Fisk University. She completed her undergraduate degree at Oberlin College here in Ohio and went on to earn a master's and PhD in anthropology from Northwestern University. Dr. Cole has served on numerous corporate boards, including the boards of Home Depot, Merck and Company, and was the first woman elected to the board of Coca-Cola. She has accomplished many firsts in the nonprofit arena as well, serving as the first African-American chair of the board of the United Way of America from 2004 to 2006. She has also served on the boards of the Carter Center and the National Visionary Leadership Project. Our speaker has 50 honorary degrees and has received numerous awards for leadership in higher education, civic, and humanitarian leadership. Her most recent book is entitled Gender Talk, The Struggle for Women's Equality in African-American Communities. Having achieved many firsts in her career, I think our speaker would appreciate a few related moments of history of the City Club of Cleveland. As many of you know, although the City Club has accepted men of all races and backgrounds since its founding in 1912, it wasn't until June 2, 2000, uh, 1972, after a prolonged debate, the City Club voted 228 to 97 to accept women as members for the first time in the City Club's then 60-year history. In 1978, Annette Butler became the first woman and second African-American president of the City Club. With that historical backdrop, it is my honor to bring to the City Club podium a woman who has accomplished many firsts. Please welcome President Emerita of Bennett College and Spellman College, known to many as Sister President, Dr. Janetta B. Cole. Thank you, Brother Tony. <laughs> and my sisters and my brothers all, good afternoon. I really am quite pleased and very honored to serve as your speaker today at the City Club of Cleveland. When I was growing up in Jacksonville, Florida, my mom taught me many important things. One of which is this. A woman, she said, will be known by the company she keeps. And as I read the history of this club, it became quite clear to me that I am keeping some mighty fine company. <laughs> the topic I will address today is connected to my long-standing interest in issues of diversity and inclusion, and my belief that there are very few issues of greater importance in our American democracy. The 2008 race for the presidency of the United States has cast a spotlight on these issues, in large measure because of the diversity of the candidates, because of what is talked about, as well as what is purposefully not addressed by the candidates, their surrogates, and we, 
the American citizenry. Never before in American history, or as we at a women's college would say, her story, <laughs> has there been such a diverse group of candidates and now nominees for the positions of president and vice president of our country. Today, in a front page story in one of the major newspapers, the point is made that in age, race, and gender, the tickets of the two political parties reflect a nation in transition as politics catches up with demographics. While the diversity of the candidates signals progress, there is simply no question about this. The diversity signals progress in how we Americans look at and accept people of different races, genders, religions, and ages. But there's also a good deal of tension that swirls around these very expressions of diversity. This has been most obvious in terms of the spoken and unspoken attention to race, to gender, and to what is being projected as race versus gender. The tension between some white women who supported Senator Clinton and some African American women, as well as men, who supported Senator Obama reached a pitch that was, in my view, unfortunately reminiscent of the struggle between 19th century suffragettes and abolitionists. Missed in such conflicts over what is portrayed as the primacy of gender or the primacy of race is a distortion that takes place with when individuals, each of whom has multiple identities, these individuals are reduced to a single identity and demands are made for their loyalty or political allegiance based solely on that single identity. The selection of Governor Palin as the Republican Party's nominee for vice president has also stirred up a good deal of debate as questions are raised on the difference between having any woman as a nominee and having a particular woman as a nominee. These debates are reminiscent of those that took place around the nomination of Clarence Thomas for the Supreme Court. There are charges of ignoring the importance of race and gender in this campaign season, and there are also charges of unfairly interjecting race and gender into the campaigns by doing what is now called playing the race card or playing the gender card. Imagine, if you will, how different our nation would be if the diversity that will inevitably be there, no matter which party wins, imagine how different our nation would be. Imagine if we not only had diversity there at the top, 